Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Moto Shop. I'm your host, Sam Barber, and with me today we have Ellery Connell. Hi. Ellery, where in the world of Moto will we be going today? We're going to be looking at cell shading, which is a 2D look on 3D objects. Cell shading. All right. So, so give us an example. What, what kind of uh, things have we seen in popular culture that well, has been cell shaded? If you go back as far as a movie like Titan AE or things like that, where Titan they're AE. doing they're doing two-dimensional characters and then when they set them into like space battles and things they're right. actually doing 3D space battles but they're rendering them in such a way that they look like they're two dimensional. Oh so it's a it's a very a specific aesthetic Absolutely. approach um, but it, it kind of looks a little in some ways less 3D than what yeah. you're usually producing Absolutely. in Moto. Mm -hmm. All right so it must be really really easy right? Super. Well, let's see. All right. Um, so we've got here our, our friendly neighborhood sphere that we always like to do and I'm going to apply a material that we'll call None other but Tune. Let's All be really right. creative here. Yep. And then I'm going to click over to my render tab so mm -hmm. that we can see our um, our sphere in all of its pre it's pretty gorgeous glory here. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to go in here now and I'm going to open up my Tune material. And I'm going to start here by turning off the specular amount. Okay. Personal aesthetic, I like to have specular off on my Tune shaded things because this shiny look over the top of the cell shade, I don't personally like. If you want to have it, by all means, that's, go that's ahead. a choice we all that's, have. That's your choice. All right. All right. So there are, there are two ways you can do it. There's a really simple way and a slightly less simple way. So let's look at the very simple way first. I love simple. All right. So we're going to add a gradient here. Now, what a gradient is, you remember Photoshop, it's something that goes smoothly from one color to the next. Yes. Which is kind of what our shading's here doing. It goes from the light color down to the shadows. But that is actually what we want to get away from a little bit with our cell shader. We want to have it have a little bit more of a banded look. Okay. So I'm going to take my gradient here. Right now it's set to diffuse color. I'm going to change it to diffuse amount so that it's going to affect the way light actually comes off of the sphere. So 100% means you're going to get the color back, 50% you get ah, half the color. Okay, so it's, so it's like adding some shading over the top. I see. And right now the, the default input parameter is bump height. We want to set that to incidence, which means that polygons or points on the screen that are directly facing us are at zero and points that are kind of at a glancing angle or perpendicular to our viewpoint are are 100 percent. So it's, a, it's, it's calculating that relative to the angle of the normal yes, of the Yes, of the camera. Mm -hmm. So now I open up the, the edit gradient here and you can see I have, um, I only have one set here. Mm -hmm. I have just 100 at zero. And so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add a uh, middle mouse click or if you don't have a middle mouse button, control and option and click. And I'm going to add in two points, so which would be a shadow point and a midpoint. Mm. So you can see now we're actually getting that fall off towards black, but it still looks smooth, and we want that to right. look you know more banded. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is select all of those, and I'm going to change the slope on them to stepped. Immediately you can see that ah. our shading got. So we have two steps. Two steps. <laughs> okay. Yep. And you can see if I pull this in, we can see that black starting to creep in at the edges, uh -huh. kind of that black area, and then you can change and adjust your midtone. Left and right will make it be more or less of, a, of an area that it covers, and then up and down will co control how deep right, it is. Right. Now, the only problem with this is that if you move around based off of an angle, you can see no matter where you move, it's always facing the same direction. Yes. But for some, some instances, since it's such a quick setup, it's a mm -hmm. nice thing to add over. Mm -hmm. um, might not work really well in some animations. Mm -hmm. But we're going to go in here, and I'm going to, just for the sake of our sanity, I'm going to turn on a little bit of global illumination Please so we have do. a little fill light. Thank you very and, much. Uh, <laughs> and then I'm going to adjust so my, my direct and my indirect balance a little more. So I'm going to put my direct light at 50% uh -huh. and my indirect, which is my balance light, at 75. So now I have a little bit smoother lighting. But like I said, you know, now this is just aimed right at us. And we want it to kind of correspond to the angle of the main light. Right. So what I'm going to do is I can take this gradient and another option I have is locator instance. It would be really nice if we had a light incidence angle, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we don't have that sadly. No. But we can cheat. So okay. I, I, I condone cheating, All especially right. if it gets the job done here. I'm so a big fan of in cheating 3D and simplicity. it works very well. <laughs> so let's choose locator instance. And right now you can see it all went black right. because this is going to texture gradient is our locator. Mm -hmm. So if I go over here and find this gradient, see, here, or here's that locator, texture gradient. Um, if I move this around, we'll see, oops, let's go to item mode. And now if I move this around, we'll see that we're getting something happening. Oh. Because based off of the glancing angle or the straight on angle of this locator. 
again, that's gonna be a little bit hard to set up because our light's over here, so that could be a bit of a pain. Right. What we can do is actually take this texture gradient and drag it onto the directional light to make the directional oh, okay. light its parent. I see. And initially that's not gonna do anything. <laughs> but if we go in and now you can see our position has gotten a bunch of things. It was at zero, 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 but since we've moved it, it's relative, it's position is relative to the light. Mm -hmm. So if I zero these out, now it's gonna be where the light is. Mm. And now no matter where we move our camera, those are going to correspond. And I can take this, if this is a little bit too heavy for you, you can always take that gradient, oops, and we can turn down its opacity a little bit to kind of soften the effect just a mm -hmm, bit. Mm -hmm. Find 75 to 80% usually works pretty nicely. And you could go into that curve editor and really finesse it yep. to, for the look that you want. You can add in multiple bands, you can adjust where the bands are, um, and then you can apply this over any anything else. You can, um, you can apply it if you have reflective materials. Mm -hmm. um, usually things that are really reflective won't have any diffuse to them, so putting this on diffuse amount isn't gonna do you any good. Mm. But if you put it to the reflective color and you set up a white, a mid-tone gray, and a dark color, then your reflections are gonna get that banded look too. It works over the top of textures, just about anything. Hmm. So if we go over to a scene that's set up that has, that has all that onto it, mm -hmm. a little bit of a more complex scene, this is oh, wow. my, uh, my, my so this cool is not little from, uh, Titan AE. <laughs> no, not from Titan. This is this is my uh, having fun doodling a tune looking. We'll call it a Harrier, sure. All uh, right, it's a little plain, nonetheless. It, well, yeah, it needs a little bit of a pizzazz. A little something, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's uh, let's bring up a preview render so we can see this a little bit larger, and you can see that we have this kind of camo texture on it, which right. is just a basic noise. We can look at setting that up in another episode. That's procedurally but Procedurally done. Yeah, everything here is procedural except for the crates have just a default moto wood slat okay. texture on it. And then I've got, if we go over to our shader tree, I've got those gradients over the top of everything. Oh, I see. So, sure, and if you and if you take a look, you can see how the all of the lighting effects mm -hmm. are, are banded, Absolutely. and they and they really blend well with the kind of the aesthetic look you're trying to achieve yep. with the with the picture. And you can even see them down here in the reflection. See now, whoops. So we can see that the reflection has the oh, regular sure. reflection and a little bit of a banding yeah, on that that's too. Great. And there's one other thing that I added onto this, and that's I used that one. Remember that incidence angle one that we set up at the very beginning. Yes. Um, the nice thing about that is you can use that to add just a little bit of a black outline. So see, I've put it down here, and all it does is it's white, 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 and then just drops down mm. to black here at the bottom, and then that gives us a little bit of a defining line around our objects. Mm -hmm. The one caveat to that is if you put it on the floor, and then you get it at a low angle, it's gonna turn the floor black. It's gonna start to so bleed over, yeah. usually best to put that one sandwiched between your background objects and your foreground objects. So you can see, nice. I've got all my ones that I don't want to have that outline on them here, and mm -hmm. then I've got my extra gradient underneath, and that will kind of separate those out from the scene. Wow, that's brilliant. Wow, I can't wait to take it for a spin. All it's right. a fun one to play with. <laughs> well, thank you so much, uh, Ellie Connell, for showing us cell shading, and thank you for watching Motoshop.